Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the 14th installment of my Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links Best Deck series. Today I'm going to be showing you a competitive burn deck known as Taya Burn. Before the video starts I'd just like to say this deck is probably the fastest deck in the game, so if you're into more of a slower gameplay kind of deal, this deck is definitely not for you. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so the best character for this deck is obviously Taya Gardner with the skill Jewel Standby. This skill increases each player's starting hand by one card. This skill is useful for two reasons. The first being the more cards in your hands, the quicker you're going to burn out your opponent. Considering with this deck, you're just going to be unloading your entire hand on turn one. So the more cards you've got in the hand, the more cards you can use to burn your opponent and the quicker you will do it. The second reason I'll go through later on in the video because it's always one specific card so when I get to that card I'll talk about why it's useful with this skill. Alright, let's, so let's go through the deck list now. Alright, so the deck list is 1 Gravekeeper's Curse, 3 Lady of Silence of the Flames, 2 Burning Land, 3 Goblin Thief, 2 Hinotama, 3 Cup of Ace, 3 Restructor Revolution and 3 Attack and Receive. There are a few ways you can build this deck, I just think this is the optimal way of doing it. If you don't have any Lady of Silent of the Flames, that's not really a problem. You can swap her out for a Cobra Jar or maybe a Needle Ball, but otherwise I keep this deck fairly similar to how I have it. Alright, now we'll go through the very complex strategy of this deck. So your average turn will go like this. You'll play whatever Cup of Aces you have in your hand to try and draw more burn spells, or make your opponent draw some cards, which I'll talk about later why that's important. Then you'll play any monster cards you have, play any restructure revolutions you have, play the rest of the generic burn spells you have in your hand, and set if your attack and receives if you have any of them. Basically, once you've done this turn, your opponent will be very low, normally around 2,000 life points or less. Occasionally you will just kill him on turn 1. But if you don't kill him on turn 1, it's not really a problem because you have your attack and receives ready to do a bit more damage to try and finish him off. And you have your Lady of Silent the Flame, or whichever monster you have, in defense mode, ready to be flipped and do some more damage. And due to the nature of the cards in this deck, every card you draw from now on is probably going to kill him anyway, just burn him to death. So the card I'm going to talk about now is the Restructure Revolution because it's kind of the only interesting mechanic in this deck. Not many decks kind of want your opponent to draw cards. So what Restructure Revolution does is it inflicts 200 points of damage to your opponent's life points for each card in their hand. So if you're going first with this deck, this card will become your most powerful burn spell in the deck. It will do 1000 points of damage or more, depending on if your cup of aces make you draw cards or if they make your opponent draw cards. Restructure Revolution is the reason you want to go first with this deck. If your opponent goes first, most of the time they will unload their hand on the board and their hand size will be pretty small, so this card will only be doing like 400 to 600 damage, which is fairly mediocre. But if you go first, or your opponent doesn't play that many cards on his turn, this will be your most powerful burn spell and will do a lot of damage. There's not really much else to say about this deck, so if you don't really understand how it works right now, just watch the gameplay at the end of the video and that will show you how it works. Alright, so now I'll go through each of the cards individually and talk about why they're in the deck. We'll start with the monster cards. The two monster cards in this deck are Gravekeeper's Curse and Lady of Silent of the Flames. Gravekeeper's Curse is in here because it's very generic. It does 500 points of damage to your opponent when you play it. The most important thing about Gravekeeper's Curse and why it's played over Hinotama for example is it's a monster card. So if your opponent has any spells that are like counter spells or whatever, they won't work because you're a monster card. So it's a lot harder to counter monsters as opposed to spells. Lady of Silent of the Flames is kind of what you use to defend yourself a little bit and also do a lot of damage to your opponent. When Lady of Silent of the Flames is flipped, it will remove three cards from the top of your deck 
and it will inflict 800 points of damage to your opponent's life points. This is normally more damage than pretty much every card in your deck. Plus, it has the added bonus of being a monster card, so when it's on the board, it can be used as a shield to protect your life points, which most of the time isn't really that useful because you're trying to kill your opponent in the first two, three turns, so you don't really need to be defended that much, but it can save you from two turn kills and whatnot. The most important thing is, when looking at monster cards, is this deck is only going to have a few of them. If you have too many monster cards, you will not be able to kill your opponent in the first two turns, because you can only play one monster a turn. So the idea is to keep the monster cards of this deck fairly, fairly small amount. You only want to be able to play two monster cards in the entire duel. Alright, now I'll go through the spell and trap cards in the deck. The spell and trap cards in this deck are Restructor Revolution, Cup of Ace, Goblin Thief, Burning Land, Hinotama, and Attack and Receive. So I've spoken a bit about Restructure Revolution already. It's your most powerful burn spell if you're going first. It's the reason you run Cup of Aces, or are allowed to run Cup of Aces, because normally making your opponent draw cards is really bad. But with this deck, eh, it kind of, it can kind of help you out in a way. But I won't go too much into that card because I've already gone through it already. Cup of Aces is a fairly simple card. You play it, it tosses a coin. If it lands heads, you draw two cards. If it lands tails, your opponent draws two cards. Most of the time, you actually prefer you to draw cards, not your opponent, but it's not that bad if your opponent draws cards because of Restructive Revolution. Card draw in this deck is really good because any cards you draw are just going to be burn spells. And like I said before, the more burn spells you have, the quicker your opponent's going to die. Goblin Teeth is just a powerful version of Hinotama, if you play it, it does 500 damage to your opponent, and it gets the added bonus of healing you for 500, which can keep you out of lethal range sometimes when playing against decks that are really fast and aim to kill you quickly as well. Burning Land is kind of a more of an interesting card. When you play Burning Land, it will destroy all field spells on the board, so Harpy's Hunting Ground gets destroyed, really useful for this deck, and also every player's turn they'll take 500 points of damage that's you and your opponent so this card is really really good if it stays on the board and is kept alive it will be able to do over a thousand points to your opponent which is really useful the fact that it does a little bit of burn to you is okay because normally you're gonna kill your opponent faster than they are gonna kill you so taking the 500 points of damage a turn really doesn't matter that much also like I just said this card is a very good counter to Harpy's Hunting Ground, which is really annoying when you're trying to play your attack and receives. Inotama is the most generic burn spell in the game. Simply, you play it, it does 500 points of damage to your opponent. Nothing else to really need to say about that. Attack and receive is a really, really strong burn spell. It can do anywhere between 700 points of damage and 1,300 points of damage. What attack and receive does, is if you take damage to your life points, this can be done from your opponent hitting you, spell effects such as your own burning lands for example, you can then activate it and it will do 700 points of damage to your opponent, plus a further 300 points of damage for every attack and receive you have in the graveyard. So if you have one attack and receive in the graveyard, this card will now do 1000 damage instead of 700. One thing I'd just like to say about attack and receive is don't use them together as a chain effect, so don't use them both at the same time. Otherwise, you're not going to be getting that 300 extra points of damage. You're only going to be doing 1,400 instead of 1,700. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this video. There will be gameplay at the end of this deck, which will show it off in action. Very easy, very simple deck. If you liked the video, please leave a like, comment if you've got any questions. But other than that, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. You've never seen techniques like this before. You need this will do the trick. Come on, be serious.
and and my will you do duel my turn i set a card from my hand i activate a spell I still have a lot more to learn about dueling. I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. 